guys, it's Charlie. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. Today I'm going to be doing a video which is the day in the life of a dental nurse. Now I do actually have a video about this on my channel but I watched it back to see if I could kind of get some ideas from it and it was so boring to watch. It's just me talking at the camera. I can't unfortunately take my camera to work and film because obviously privacy reasons and patient confidentiality. But what I'm gonna try and do to make this video more fun is do things around my room that I would do in the surgery, basically. I have no idea how it's gonna turn out. It might be absolutely crap, but we're gonna give it a go just so you guys aren't constantly just watching me even though that's all my videos on this entire channel is just watching me talk at you. So I thought if I could do some other bits, then it might keep you a bit more engaged and it shouldn't be as boring as the other one. Anyway, if you'd like to see my attempt of doing the day in the life of a dental nurse without actually having to take you to work and showing you, then just keep watching. So I actually have a morning routine on YouTube, which I will link in the description down below. And that's my routine for work. So that's the first part of it. I am not allowed to wear a uniform into work. Mm. No dental nurse should be wearing the uniform into work. And that's because of cross-contamination. That uniform should be cleaned every single day. So you should obviously bring the uniform home from work, put it in the wash, and you should be wearing a clean uniform to work each day. So I would go into work with a clean uniform, put it on at work, then start my day. And the first thing I'm going to do is set up my surgery. So I'm going to wipe all the surfaces down with a particular cleaning spray. So you need to make sure all your surfaces are wiped down and this includes the work surfaces, the chair, the computer, keyboard, the mouse of the computer, the light, any surface in the surgery needs to be wiped down in the morning. It obviously should have been done the night before but I'll get into shutting down the surgery later in the video but in the morning it needs to be done freshly. Once I've done this I'm then going to start getting the stuff out that I will need for the day and I don't mean instruments, what I mean is things that I will need to continue using throughout the day. So this will be for example the mouthwash. In my practice we have a big pump box bottle of mouthwash and I will pop it on the side, get a fresh plastic cup out, pump a little bit and then fill it up the rest of it with water. I will only ever do this if there is a treatment in. I won't put it out for every single patient and obviously if it is out and a patient hasn't used it, you would need to tip it away and get a fresh one because any aerosols that might have been in the air. So it's probably best just to get that mouthwash out only when a patient comes in for a filling or if the dentist requests it because sometimes they might do a quick scale and then say have a rinse at which point I will then get some mouthwash so that they can have a rinse. So I like to keep the mouthwash bottle on the side. Along with this bottle, I will put the patient glasses because any treatments that you do, the patient will need to be wearing glasses for. I will also have the disinfectant spray on the side because this will obviously be used after every single patient. And we also have some wipes which should be used on certain surfaces. I think that's pretty much it for what I would have out. Obviously, as well as the box of gloves that I need and my visor will be out on the side as well. It won't messy it will just be in one small area because that's the stuff that I'm going to constantly need all day. Once that is out the next thing that I will do is put the clean instruments in the drawers. So we leave nothing dirty in the surgeries. Anything that's been left over from the night before will be in the decontamination room soaking in water and then they will be processed first thing in the morning. This shouldn't be too much because pretty much everything would have been done the night before. Everything clean in your surgery will need to be put away. Now, for us, we would put all the instruments in the drawers in their own kind of little piles so it's easy to get to. And at the end of the day, which again, I'll go into at the end of this video, we process all of that so that everything is definitely disinfected and sterilized for the next day's use. So once I've put all my instruments away, I will then have my dirty box sat on the dirty side and the clean box sat on the clean side. And this is obviously something that you should be doing. Only the dirty stuff on the red dirty side, only the clean stuff on the clean green side. Something else I would generally do in the mornings when I'm setting up my surgery is check that I have enough stock 
for the day but also the week sort of thing. So things like suction tubes, you've got enough in the surgery, any pots of things like Chemfil or Polyef, just make sure that you've got enough in the pots that you're not going to mix and go, oh I need more and then have to leave the surgery to go and get more. I just like to make sure I have enough things stocked up in my surgery so I'm ready to go and it's not going to disturb my day. I will also make sure my water is sufficient for the day and run the water lines through just to make sure they're clear and you know it's all fresh and nice water coming out. You need to make sure you're using distilled water with a little water tablet which obviously makes it nice and clean and that should be checked every morning to make sure that your water is sufficient. The particular tablets that we use can be used for up to two weeks I believe so it doesn't mean that you have to change that water every single day as long as the tablet is in there and those tablets are good to go. We definitely will not keep them in there for two weeks because we're going to use way more water than that. You're probably looking at changing the water maybe every other day but like I said it is distilled clean water with the water tablet in. That water tablet that we use is good for two weeks but you're not going to be changing it two weeks, you're going to be changing it a lot more regularly than that. And the last thing I'm going to do for kind of setting up wise is just have a look through the day and see what we've got in that day so I can kind of start to plan ahead. If we need a particular lab to come and collect, I will admit I'm not the best at this because I do forget. I will try and do it as much as I can. I will check the day sheet to see if we need a particular lab and then ask the receptionist to call that lab a little bit later for them to come and collect. Some labs will call the practice, some labs you have to call yourself. But that is something I will always try and do, is to just check what labs we need on that day. So now this is when our day starts and obviously every day is different so I can't really go into detail about what happens because I don't even know. You could have a completely different day for anything. But I'll go into the basics of what does need to be done every single day. So after every single patient, you need to make sure the surgery is going to be disinfected for the next one. And this means obviously clearing down after every patient and properly wiping again all the surfaces and the chair and the light and just making sure it's all clean. It's called universal procedure and it's basically to say that you should treat every single patient the same. So even if it's your family member that come in and you know they're clean, you still need to make sure you're gloving up and using the correct PPE and the correct solutions to clean and disinfect everything, regardless of who the person is. If you have somebody come in with say hepatitis or HIV, again, you should clear the surgery exactly the same as you should with anybody else because you shouldn't be doing any more or any less with particular groups of people it should all be done exactly the same so it's to the highest standard for every patient now I'm not really going to go into setting up for each procedure because I have a lot of videos about this on my channel now when you're clearing down you obviously need to make sure that all the dirty instruments are going into your dirty box in my surgery we have a specific nurse that's going to be doing the decontamination all day. So we don't need to worry about taking that stuff to the decontamination room because the nurse will come and collect the dirty instruments, disinfect and sterilize them and then bring them back clean and pop them in our clean box. However, for some practices they don't have a decon nurse so it'll be up to them to take their dirty instruments to the decontamination room and decontaminate them themselves. But for my particular surgery we do have a nurse that does all of that. So once your instruments are in the dirty box you won't have to worry about them. It will be the decon nurse that comes in and and sorts all of those out for you. Now, my day is always split into two parts. So you have the morning session, you then have your lunch, and then you have the afternoon session. And I'm pretty sure that's how most practices work. Now, the morning for us is longer than the afternoon. I think generally that's how most practices work. That's pretty much it for your day, what you need to do. And now I'm gonna move on to the shutting down side of things. Now to clear down at the end of the day, you are gonna be wiping down absolutely everything. Again, like we did when you set up the surgery and just making sure even things like the cupboard handles are done, all the top of the cupboards are done, just every surface is properly wiped down and disinfected. What you're also going to need to do when you shut down the surgery is clear through the suction. 
So we have a big bottle. I will try and find some pictures and put them in so you can see what I'm talking about. And our suction tubes go onto this bottle and then all that liquid is filtered up and that will clean out the suction. So that will need to be done at the end of every single day, along with taking the filter. Now, I have said this in a lot of my videos. I hate taking the filter out at the end of the day because so many people have spat into it or put crap down it and when you pull it out of the sink it's got like stuff. Now I have got a little tip for you throughout the day maybe you know the end of the morning session and then I will do this again at the end of the day I will pour about four or five cups of hot water down it and I don't know how it does this but I've definitely found it just helps to like break up all the saliva and that kind of stuff so that when you pull it out it actually comes out with nothing hanging off of it which is a lot nicer we then put that into a cup of water and bleach like a little bit of bleach diluted with water we'll pop that in a cup and then we leave that overnight to you know get all clean another thing that i will do at the end of the day is clean our hand washing sink and we actually have two sinks in surgery i believe most dental practices there'll be two sinks in surgery because you need a hand washing sink and then another separate sink so if you've had an extraction for example and there's some blood on an instrument you'll use the non hand washing sink to run that instrument under the water to get the blood off, you know, before it sets and it goes into the decom room. So I will clean both these sinks out with, we just use SIF in my practice, so I will SIF around the sink, clean that all out, and then I'll use another disinfectant spray to you know, just make sure it's nice and properly clean. Obviously everything that's out on the side will be put away into the cupboards. The keyboard will be wiped on the computer. We actually have covers over the keyboards, the easy wipe covers, so that there's no like gaps between the keys that we have to clean out it's just smooth flat surface i'll wipe the mouse and you know put that all away nicely switch off the computer lock all the cupboard doors so the cupboards which have any patient information in like lab work that's come back or the book with the x-rays on those cupboards will need to be locked and the keys then locked away into a safe and that's pretty much it for shutting down i've probably forgotten something and I did forget something, so let me quickly tell you about that. Any instruments we haven't used or that have come back clean and we haven't used since they come back clean, we will put those onto big trays at the end of the day and send them into decon so that they can also be sterilised, ready and clean for the next morning. Obviously, again, it's a case of just making sure everything is properly, properly disinfected and clean. And like I said, even though you're doing this at your shutdown, it will also need to be done first thing in the morning as well. And I think that pretty much brings me to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed what I've tried to do with this video. If you did, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, click that subscribe button down below, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! Yeah.